Okay, I'm gonna go. I just got done. I'm gonna go film the landing because I didn't want to let me bring the laptop on on the uh, on the glider. It was great. You see Edwards Air Force Base over here, and uh, when we released, we went kept going up with the thermal. So I'm gonna I'm gonna walk back over there and and film the uh, the landing. Here we go. This is way out here. There's some Joshua trees. See the Joshua trees, and we got all the all, all the veterans out here today from the disabled veterans, we got blind veterans, we got uh, Cal Vet veterans, and, and veterans from the domiciliary in uh, West Hollywood, or West Hollywood, West, uh, West LA. Anyway, so this is a runway right here, and when I walk down, and uh, here, here come, one comes now, we're landing, I just got done with this, here he comes, here he comes, it was kind of a rough landing, but you can, but it was fun, he let me take the controls. And uh, although I didn't want to do any radical stuff, there was a lot of crosswinds and thermals. As, and here he comes, land, coming in for landing. I'll get closer for the next one. Here he comes. I was on a high performance one and made out of aluminum. It was made for acrobatics. Uh, but these other ones, these uh, the fiberglass ones are made for training. Oh, that looked like a little smoother landing that I got. And this is the golf cart that takes the veterans up to the up to the landing. But this is uh, one of Air Force guy Gossett going on his his trip here. And we got the and here's the old '60s crop duster planes that take us that take us up there. Yeah, there's a bunch of crop dusting. They look pretty light. Anyway, we'll get a close shot of uh, of this fiberglass ones. These are made for training. They said. And they're a little more docile and not as much uh, high performance capability, but uh, it looks pretty space age. I guess these are all German built. Uh, I guess the tradition goes back to pre-World War II when, uh, when the Germans weren't allowed to have an Air Force. So they trained a lot of guys with these gliders and it's got this horizontal stabilizer on the top. I guess that makes it a little smoother ride that horizontal stabilizer yeah I can tell that we're up a little higher because like my breathing is a little bit uh, labored because of the less oxygen and here it is here's a little here's the the training fiberglass version I think it's uh, uh, little, he said it was a little bit more docile than the aluminum one are you speaking into the microphone? Well, it's got sound. I might as well. Yeah. You know, I mean, I guy saw him narrating. And here's the pilot. These guys volunteer their time out here to help all of us veterans, you know, show us that we can have guys other. Are so highly paid. <laughs> <Way over. laughs> uh, I don't think they're paid for this, though. <laughs> no. Uh, uh, so we just show us veterans a little bit, uh, you know, time we can have without having to be around. Uh, you know, drugs and alcohol and all that. We, you know, there's other things to do in life, and uh, this is one of them. And uh, anyway, so I'm going to walk down to the landing where they land, and uh, so hopefully, over here, this is the uh, airspeed indicator the, for the ground airspeed indicator. It shows what direction the, and here's the, here's the ferry that takes the, the veterans out to the airfield, the golf cart. It tows them around too to get them in position. Which is cool, and this is one of this is the airspeed indicator over here for the, like I said, with the ground. And it looks like it shows it points. Oh, now, anyway, I'm not sure how it works. I saw it spinning earlier, the bottom one, but you can see the the little sock there is. Uh, Showing the wind. When I, there was a lot of thermals when they released us. I was kept going up and up and up. He let me take the controls, and that was really fun. Here, 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 here's the here, let me get this takeoff. Here we go. Here the here he's taking off. He gets he get in the air really fast. See, he's already he's already in the air, and the and the and the uh, plane is not. There they go. There they go. Huh? <laughs> there they go. Anyway, I'm gonna. You can see the moon up there. 
Anyway, Edwards Air Force Base is over this way. You can't see it now. I wanted to be able to take this up. I had my phone, but I didn't think of it because I have a little video on the phone. So anyway, I'm going to walk up here and we're going to show, I'm going to show you the other gliders that they have. <coughs> Here's a little stunt plane. It's like a stunt plane going off up there. He's doing some, uh, some dive bombers there. There he goes. Beautiful day out here. Here comes the golf cart again. I, I'm just walking to the star of the show. He gets, he's going to get his 15, 15 seconds of fame. <laughs> I'm going to get up here. So when he comes down, I think I think it's a 20 minute uh, uh, flight. And we got up to like 5,000 feet, which is was higher than our, like I said, was higher than our our release uh, altitude. I'm still, in the 80s aviation terms, I'm still figuring them all out. Anyway, we're gonna get some close-ups of these gliders on standby. At least I'm probably showing this for you. Yeah. It's nice of him to do that. The only problem was on our flight is when he said, Oh no, I've lost the tow plane that I started to worry a little bit. <laughs> I was asking him where Lake Arrowhead was, I distracted him, and, and the tow plane was like way that we couldn't see it. And the, I'm going, oh, my toy, I'm, do I worry now? Is this the part where I start to worry? But anyway, I don't think you're going to have that problem. I think he learned his lesson on the last one. And so... <laughs> yeah, we did. She asked me the question and I lost my attention yeah. on what I was doing. Yeah. I was pretty high. Yeah. Fortunately, it was my fault. Yeah, it was it's definitely I distracted him, but uh, but that's okay because you know that's something that's a story that I can tell the rest of my life and uh, I'll be happy to do that. Here comes the here comes the landing. I missed him coming in. Damn it. That was that looked like a smoother landing than we had. <laughs> that's what that stabilizer does on the top there. It makes it a little bit more smoother ride and stuff. Not really. Just a different design. Okay, here we go. There's the uh, tow plane. Taking, getting ready to tow them up. Get, get in position. There's not much to these either. Looks like they're pretty basic. It's a Piper. A little Piper Cub, I think they call them. I'm not sure if that's called a Cub. I'm not supposed to go past the cones. So I'm past the cones. Now here he comes in position. I want to get I want to get him right when he's taken off. So I think it's going to be right around here, right when he leaves the air. You can see there's snow in the mountains. It's not that bad out here. It's a sunny day, but it's it's, it's not it's like probably 70 something. It's not that bad. So here he goes, I'm going to get one more landing. I don't know how much battery I have left. I think he's going to probably get airborne right about here. Because it's, it's got a, guy, a little breeze coming. And those things are fairly light. Hooking up that tow bar that, or that, that tow line, it looks a little thin to me, man. But apparently, it's strong enough. They're hooking around. I put it down the cockpit. Here comes the next victim. I mean, uh, pilot. <laughs> Oh, this is our World War II veteran. Looks like he used to fly P-38s by the looks of his jacket. Let's go up and talk to him for a second. Maybe he'll tell us something. I know he's got a story to tell. Let's see if he was a, a pilot for the P-38. Looks like he was an ex-pilot. Ex Here we go. Here we go. He's going to be airborne quickly. 
He's gonna be airborne quickly, watch. There he goes, there he goes, no, oh, oh, shit. There he goes, now he's up. There he goes. Those things are fairly light. I don't know how, how much does one of these weigh. That's it? Wow, that is light. That's not bad. Even the aluminum one? That's less. The aluminum one's less than the fiberglass ones? Really? I want to talk to this gentleman here. Did you used to fly P-38, sir? Yeah. In the war? World War II. We got a World War II P-38 pilot. And what's your name, sir? Tony? Tony M. Paplia. Tim Paplia. My name's Michael. I'm just filming this for, you know, I'm going to show it to, the, to all the vets back there. And I just want to thank you for what you did. We're all vets, but... Uh, those P-38 pilots in World War II, we know, did a hell of a job. Oh, that was a hell of an airplane. <laughs> and where did you fly it at? What, what uh, theater? Southwest Pacific area and uh, 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 all the islands. We started out from Australia, Sydney, Australia, and we went all up to the islands, Philippines, Okinawa, Japan, then wound up in Korea, South Korea. I see, and then you and you had uh, air bases on those islands? Yes, sir. You weren't, you weren't carrier based, correct? Were you carrier based, aircraft carrier based? No, no, U.S. Air Force. U.S. Air Force. US okay, Air so Force. you, we had to take the island and, and take over the airfield and then you could fly there and then go to the next one, right? Just move on until we beat them. The okay, and what was the what was the specific job of the P-38? Were there were there strictly fighter, or did you bomber fighter escort course. as well? Strictly fighters, and and uh, uh, we escorted bombers to and uh, to and from the the, the, the B-7 missile point and back to the base. All right, the B-17s and the B-29s, the B-17 uh, bombers. Yeah, B-17s, B-25s. Uh, BB-7s, A-26s, we have scored a lot of those. Did you, see un did you see Unbroken yet? The movie that just came out? Oh yeah, with the, what's his name? Uh, 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 Louis, Louis uh, Zamperini. Yeah, I know him and I got his book and I got his autograph. Oh, you did? Hey, Mike, All right, let's good luck, here. no problem. Well, that was my interview with the uh, World War II P-38 pilot. Uh, apparently, he flew in the Southwest Pacific Theater. Oops, okay, I'm in the way. I better get out of the way here. Oops. Uh, I got I got preoccupied. <laughs> Sorry about that. Here he goes. He's ready to get. So that, that's an that's a that's an Air Force veteran going up on a glider. What happened to your motor, Mr. Air Force veteran? <laughs> <laughs> Here they come. This guy's coming in really low. I don't know what the why he's coming over here so low right now. Oh no, he's going the other way. Look, there's an optical illusion. Anyway, that was a surprise interview I got with a World War II P-38 pilot. Uh, flew a Pacific Theater, escorted bombers and fighter during that time. And here's another one of our wonderful volunteers. Thank you so much for helping us out here today. No I'm going to get one more landing and then I'm going to shut it down. I think my batteries were in bed. So that was funny. He actually knows the uh, Ernie or uh, uh, Louis Zamperini, which who was the. Uh, uh, the subject of a movie that just came out in a novel by Laura Hildebrand, who wrote Seabiscuit as well. And uh, he was an Olympic runner in the 36 Olympics in Berlin. Um, and then uh, went into the Air Force, got shot down over the South Pacific and spent, uh, I think it was 40 days in a raft, getting attacked by sharks and eating raw seagull. And then only to be... Uh, rescued by a Japanese ship and then it was ended up being shipped to Japan POW for the duration of the war and uh, you know he was severely beaten uh, I think they picked on him specifically because he was a, an athlete and uh, the rest of the story goes he 
he became my uh, after after the war. Uh, he, he 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 told he devoted himself to Christ and uh, the Christian religion and helping people. And he lived to be like 90 years old, 90 something years old. He just died in 2014, and he got to carry the Olympic torch during the Olympics. He got to go back to Japan to do that. So that was a pretty cool cool story. Anyway, I think I want to get back over here a little bit because when this landing comes, it's usually over here, and it's a little bit more. Uh, a little bit it's a little bit of rough landing I must say I wish I had some music to go along with this I talk too much anyway so we're gonna get a little closer for the landing here Here we go, this is the guy, another shuttle, another wonderful volunteer shuttling everybody. What's that? Oh, I was just, uh, I'm just narrating for the, for the thing, sorry. Here we go, I'm gonna get over here and get this thing close for the landing. Looks like, I don't know if this guy, no, that's the, that's the tow plane. We'll get one more landing while my batteries run dead. We're going back by the executive jet, well, executive airplane, it looks like. Here we go. Here's the uh, here's the Air Force guy. The, the pilot sits in the back. This is the one I went up on. Oh no, this isn't the one I went up on. What did he switch planes? Oh, here we're gonna get a landing of the tow plane. Look how he does sideways. I guess they dump off air this way so he can slow down. That's what they were telling me. He's as slow as airspeed so he can uh, he can land, but he looks all sideways and cockeyed to me. There he comes. Nice landing. Nice and smooth. Still on us. Ooh, that was a smooth landing. That was a good one. Oh, here comes one of the the, the private. Uh, he's got his own personal glider here. I guess he, I guess that's the trailer for it. And he must have to put it together. He might have to fold up fold up wings. I'm thinking these are fold up wings. So how would they store it? How would they put it in there? He's got the vehicle to tow it. Let me go talk to him for a second. If he'll let me, I don't know if he will. I just gotta ask him a question. So does that fold up wings, or how do you how does that work? You gotta you gotta fold out the wings. Uh, they they're they're basically in sideways. You pull them out and then stuff them on. I see. So that's all you gotta do, just the wings. Oh no, there's a lot more. There's more than that. Yeah. <laughs> but it's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Well, I'd never seen a trailer like that before. Yeah, we're a bunch of veterans that are taken out. Oh, all right. Uh, and uh, they're yeah, volunteering the time, and that's right yeah, that's why it's busy. Yeah. 
Good. All right, well, I just wanted to get you, I, I'm filming it a little bit, hope you don't oh, mind, right. just so I can show, show the boys, the fellas back into your base. Very good. All right. I'm trying to get one more landing. Uh, this I thing. know it's in the right place when I saw a glider over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <Okay>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, here we go. We're going to try to get one more landing with the glider landing. God, if you look at it this way, it really doesn't take up much. Uh, oh, it's got a low signature. I wonder if you can pick these up on radar. Hey, can I ask you a question? Do you, could you pick one of these up on radar? <laughs> Sorry. They're getting ready to tow this thing, so I don't want to interrupt them. Not very well, unless it has a transponder. Uh huh, yeah, exactly. With, uh, gotcha. Carbon fiber and they yes. like metal. I don't know, what about the aluminum one? The aluminum one, yeah. yeah. Except it might be too slow. Right, They're, right. I think they have a, a minimum speed. Right. So it might be too slow to show. Yeah. I know that I know that they used to um, during World War II they used to throw out aluminum chafe to, to fake to fool the radar, you know. You know what I'm saying? Just a bunch yeah. of yeah. stuff to throw. I wanna get I wanna get one more um, landing with the with the gliders. Are one coming in pretty soon? I hope. Well, there are two in the air. Oh, there's two in the air? Three, pardon me. Three. Oh, is that right? Well, there's got to be one coming in pretty soon. Oh, here. Oh, this is the plane again. Yeah. Hey, I hear it on the radio. On the radio. Oh, okay, okay. And so your your function here is to uh, log all the uh, flights? And correct. I see. That is correct. Well, you're doing a great job. Well, I'm logging. <laughs> logging away. All right, well, we got to get out of the way again. We're in the way again, and so I had to back up. They just do them one route to the other. This is a this is a really uh, organized operation. It looks like uh, these people know what they're doing, and they made us feel safe and secure Good. during our flight because I was a little bit apprehensive. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, the pilot. I was distracted. The pilot and asked him where Lake Arrowhead was, and then after he uh, he showed me, he said, "Oh no, where's the tow plane?" I was going, "Uh oh, I don't think that's." Was, I, I thought didn't know if he was joking or what. At first, I thought he was joking because he was trying to skip, you know, get a little, get a laugh out of me. But then I realized after he got the uh, tow plane uh, in front of us again, <laughs> um, that uh, that was a real he lost it for a couple days. Because then he explained it, it, it's important to pay attention the whole time when you're up there. <laughs> Try to find some shade, see if I have much battery I got left. Oh, maybe he'll let me look, look in the van real quick. Here we go. We got close up of the, of the plane here. There's the, one of the pilots. There he goes again. We're getting, we're getting more uh, takeoffs from our landings. There's gotta be one coming in soon. Stay out of the way, I know. Yeah, I don't want you walking into a crowd. No, I'm done. I'm done. Thank you. All right. That well, looks like it wants me out of the way, so... Looks like I'm not going to get a landing like I wanted. It's all right. If I can't find some shade over here so I can check and see the uh, battery.
Uh, this guy's on me like sticking on shit, so I'm out of here. Ah.